Margo, would you like to assist me? I freeze up for a moment, still feeling a bit awkward at being caught staring at his body. As if there's anywhere else to look. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I know I can say no, but Alex is here, and I don't want to come off as a belligerent pet in front of him. We're still sort of pretending, after all, even though Alex probably thinks something is off about me. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I would probably be the other way around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. I get up and stand awkwardly in front of the half-naked wolf, glad that at least I'm in my robes now. Do your people have combat sports? Uh, yeah. Actually, there were a few where your people uplifted. Wrestling and something else where they basically just beat each other up. I can't really think of the name of it, though. Kappa Werewolf. Uh, Amicus smiles. Is it about boxing? Like... Hitting each other. I assume he didn't forget what boxing is, so it must be something else. Romany. Yeah. That sounds similar enough. This is called Pugnu, and it mostly involves punching, kicking, and grappling. The only rules are no claws, no teeth, and no going for the eyes or groin. Oh, so it's like MMA. <laughs> it's like MMA. Yeah. No eyes or groin, that pause. Amicus smirks at me. Yeah, don't go for the groin, you fucking perv. That's and while saying, sparring, yeah. we avoid striking above the neck. So, <laughs> he's going after us twice now. Just mm -hmm. the two things we did when we fought him is <laughs> so we kicked him in the groin and we hit him on the neck. That is true. So, go ahead and throw some punches at me. Amicus grins and hunches down, his paws out. I look over at Alex, who watches us, a bit, dis a big, a bit of a disapproving look on his face. Amicus notices. Don't mind, Alex. His people are too soft for this sport. Um. Oh. oh. Um. Wait. Oh. Um, excuse me. But we invented the grapples you use. We just grew out of it. Boom. I'm just surprised that's coming from him because I can't imagine. Like, I, was, I didn't think that was going to be his line because I can't imagine his people grappling. Yeah. I guess a cat. Seems very grapply, so I guess that makes sense. Amicus seems to ignore the cat, circling me. Come on, don't hold back. Mostly I just want to train my reflexes. I just imagine any kind of civilized species growing up at some point is going to be... They're going to be fighting each other. Uh, There's going to be combat sports, but he just... Like, Alexios just seems so uh, passive. I can't imagine yeah. fighting at all. I, th I think about how they're like... Uh, I think big cats are, like, way stronger than wolves. In fact, like, uh... What is it? Like, if you think about it, like, cats have, like, more, like, army arms. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Their front arms act more like arms. Well, ti like, a, like, a tiger, which is, like, the biggest big cat there is, I think could definitely beat up a wolf. The wolf's whole thing is the pack mentality, which is, like, why yeah. they do so well, because they have a little group think. But... Bears. Bears trump everybody. I'm a I'm a bear fan. Yeah. I try to shake off my timidness and move forward, throwing an awkward punch at Amicus's chest. The wolf easily slaps it away. I hope you can do better than that, Marco. I blush and put a bit more effort into a quick punch at the wolf's side, which he dodges with a jump to the right. I follow him and jab at his stomach, which he blocks with an elbow. Oh, come on, you can hit harder than that. We go on for a while longer until I finally stop, huffing. Amicus comes up from his crouch. What's wrong? Tired already? I shake my head. Honestly, I just don't like throwing punches at you. It seems it feels kind of wrong. <laughs> Alex perks up. See? Marco understands. Amicus rolls his eyes. Pfft, you're both soft. There's nothing wrong with a bit of sanctioned combat. In fact, I'd say it creates a more civilized... <clears throat> I take the opportunity to jab Amicus in the side, making the wolf grunt. I mean, that's kind of cheap. We kind of cheated. That's not cool. Amicus turns on me with widened eyes. Uh, oops. <laughs> Amicus frowns while Alex laughs. I'll show you an oops. Amicus smirks as he ducks in, grabbing my arms and easily pinning me them behind my back. Hey! Amicus growls p playfully in my ear. <laughs> now it's your turn to train. Try and get out of this. 
He leans heavily against me, using his weight to his advantage. It's clear I have no chance of getting out of the hold, but I try anyway, struggling and complaining. Amicus. I jump, and so does Amicus, the wolf immediately letting me go. The sudden lack of support almost causes me to face plant before Amicus, is ca Amicus catches me and sets me back on my feet. I turn around to see Kato. Despite the volume and fury in his voice, just moments earlier, he appears almost calm. Amicus and I stand there a moment, breathing heavily, then Amicus bows. Good morning, Kato. I quickly follow suit, bowing low. There's a moment of silence as Kato regards us both. Afternoon, you mean. You're late. My apologies, I lost track of the time at the lake. Your pet did not remind you? Is that not one of his duties? Kato's gaze snaps in my direction and I almost jump. I don't know what to do, so I go back to bowing, wondering if I should apologize. I have not taught him our hours yet, Kato. It's my fault. Kato watches us for a moment longer, then begins unfastening his robe. Luckily, luckily, my appointment with the Praetor had been cancelled, so despite your tardiness, we may train. Kato tosses his robe aside. Move, pet. I stand there like an idiot for a moment before realizing he's talking to me. I hurry over to sit down next to Alex, and I can tell by his, the expression on his face that he's also a bit worried. I see you've already warmed up. Kato glances over at me again before turning back to Amicus, getting into a crouch. Amicus stands awkwardly for a moment before doing the same. Yes, uh, did you need to... I did mine while waiting for you over half an hour, Amicus. Ah. Uh. The two big wolves start circling each other. I want to ask Alex if this is normal, but something tells me I shouldn't speak out of turn in the presence of Kato. Your brother had a very successful speech in the city today. Over 500,000 attended. Hmm? Amicus seems thrown off by what Kato said, but then Kato's fist snaps out and smacks Amicus right on the nose. Ugh! The wolf stumbles back, blinking and snorting as he holds his face. I wince. Didn't Amicus just tell me they don't go for the face during training? I look at Alex questioningly, but the cat is now looking firmly at the ground between his feet, his ears down. That's double his last speech, Amicus, and it rivals your father's early days as Emperor. Amicus is recovered at this point, and he's got his paws back up, his teeth bared. He doesn't respond and starts circling Kato again. And this time he attacks first, throwing an elbow at Kato's face. Kato ducks it and moves to the side, smacking a fist into Amicus's back, right over the kidney. Ah! Amicus lets out a pained grunt, bending sideways and stumbling before forcing himself back into position, his teeth showing now. And while you were being a pup at the lake, Cassius was touring the countryside, and even, drew, even that drew thousands. Kato throws a sudden kick at Amicus's thigh, and I look away. But I still hear the painful thwack of furry flesh on furry flesh. This isn't training. This is punishment. Stealing a ship and flying across the galaxy will only get you so far, Amicus. You win the people over, not me. Ugh. Amicus, is, Amicus bull rushes the old wolf, grabbing one of Kato's legs by the thigh, lifting it off the ground while he starts throwing vicious punches over into the older wolf's face. Kato seems to become dazed, stumbling on his one foot, raising his paws to protect himself. I silently root for, Attica, for Amicus, waiting for him to put the old man on his ass. But then Kato's paw comes around in a vicious slap that turns Amicus's head to the right. He drops Kato's leg, and that's when the old wolf wraps his arms around Amicus's waist, setting his shoulder, setting his shoulder in the other wolf's stomach before actually lifting him up off the ground. I don't know how exactly, I don't know exactly how much Amicus weighs, but it's probably around the same as Kato himself, and somehow the old wolf's able to carry Amicus across the pit in a rush. 
Alex and I dive out of the way as Kato rushes Amicus into the stairs with a thudding crunch. <clears throat> I look back and see Amicus folding, folded around a a Kato's shoulder, making a sound like a deflated tire as his eyes bulge. After a moment, Kato finally pulls back. Amicus curls up and rolls down the, the, the few steps to the pit of the amphitheater, making a horrible groaning sound. Kato, meanwhile, straightens out his undergarments before turning to pick his robes up. Good spar, Amicus. I hope you learn something from it. I announce to the public that the trials will begin at the end of this month. Remember that your pet will be involved, so be sure that he is prepared. Kato ties on his robe and walks away, then suddenly turns as if forgetting something, addressing the still wheezing Amicus. Oh, and your sister and her guest arrived today. She requested to see you in the Great Hall as soon as our session ended. You're voicing both of those characters. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going to get you busy. <laughs> yeah, one of those characters is like the second most... Probably the most second most prominent character after Amicus, actually. Oh, cool. And with that, Kato stalks off, his robes billowing in the wind. I'll be, I'll be the wind. <laughs> I'll be the wind. I rush to Amicus's side. Amicus, are you okay? I know the wolves are tougher than humans, but if I had been slammed into the stairs like that, there'd be a good chance I'd never get back up. I set a hand on Amicus's back as he hugs his middle and presses his face against the stone floor. He keeps making a strained grunting sound, and I can see a strand of drool connecting from his lips to the ground. Alex stands next to us, nervously fidgeting with his robe. Amicus. Amicus surprises me by how roughly by roughly pushing my hand away. I I just lost my wind. Give me a moment. Amicus turns away from me, then rolls onto his back, his paws above his head. His breathing's still irregular, but at least he is breathing now. Alex clears his throat. <clears throat> Amicus, do you need medical attention? Amicus takes a deep breath, then lets it out slowly. No, Alex. All right, then I should probably take my leave. I don't know when Cassius will return. Alex looks extremely uncomfortable, bows to both of us. Amicus, Marco, thank you for the outing. It was very relaxing. Yeah, he sounds relaxed. He then quickly makes his exit down to the stone path, disappearing through the trees. I start awkward I stand awkwardly off to the side, waiting for Amicus to recover. Some ambassador friend he is. He opens one eye, looking at me. You know, you can head back to the palace as well. I just want to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. I mean, he, he hit you really hard. I'm a little worried. Don't be. Go back to my room. Amicus's usual, usually cheerful mood has completely dissipated. Well, if I'm pretending to be your pet, then I guess I'll just pretend to be worried, all right? Amicus just grunts and finally gets to his feet, wincing as he does. He straightens out his undergarments, which had been which had twisted off to the side before walking toward the same path Alex had taken. I quickly catch up, following a few steps behind the wolf. Amicus is hunched over, walking in a light limp. I feel a wave of anger at Kato. He'd been nice to me yesterday, but now I realize that isn't typical for him. I understood the lesson he was teaching Amicus in the amphitheater, but I don't understand why it had to involve violence. Is this how the wolves normally treated each other? Fake civility with bursts of savage aggression. Was that? Was what Kato did normal? What do you mean? I mean, does he usually just beat you like that? Amicus sighs deeply. Not usually, no. It seemed a bit... much. Can we not speak of this? I'm not in the mood. I go quiet, 
and I see Amicus's ears fall flat for a bit before coming back up. We walk the rest of the way to the palace in silence. I'm sure to stay a few steps behind Amicus, wanting to give him space. I get the feeling that, while he's definitely upset about what happened, he's mostly just embarrassed that I saw it. We finally reach the main entrance to the palace, and just as we turn into the Great Hall... Hmm... It's probably the sister. What's, uh, the, what's the sister like? Very professional and official, but not in the... But not in the customer service ways that that that, that Alex is, because she's a, a noble and an ambassador and so on. <clears throat> she's dip, she's uh, she's the biggest politician of them all. Oh, okay. I, I probably you know I feel like customer service and politician are pretty <laughs> close together. There's a lot in common in terms of like my experience. So. Yeah, it's just one of them has more false humility and the other one has more groveling. <laughs> Amicus. A high sing-song voice echoes around the Amicus. marble walls as, as, a silent, <laughs> as a slight wolfish figure quickly, appro- quiet, yeah, quickly approaches us. A wolf who can I only, who I can only assume is Virginia, walks up to Amicus. She is cool looking. I like her. She places both paws on his shoulders and leans in, pressing the side of her face to his. Hi, Virginia. Virginia pulls back, rolling his her eyes. Amicus, I took your place on a trip around the moon for a full week, and your only response is, hi. Sorry, I'm I'm not feeling all that well. Oh, was Kato too rough with you during training? Shall I have a word with him? No, I'm just sore. Hmm, you could use a shower too. You smell dreadful. I, we were swimming in the lake. Never mind. I should be getting back to my room. Enough with the dour mood, Amicus. Not until we introduce our guests to each other. Virginia looks right at me over Amicus's shoulder. Amicus sighs, then reaches out his paw to me. I walk over to him, letting the wolf place his paw on my shoulder. This is Marco. He's an abandoned child. Oh, fascinating. I thought Cass was pulling my tail in his letters. Virginia stretches out a paw. I stand there awkwardly, unsure what to do, so I reach out and take her paw in my hand. Then, after another pause, I lean down and brush my lips on her fur, like I've seen people do in movies. (laughs) (coughs) Interesting. It seems they have some sort of... etiquette. I step back, keeping my head down. A bit, yes. Now where's the Chemian? Manners, Amicus. He's examining the murals. She turns to her right, raising her voice a bit. Neferu? Could you come over here and meet my brother, please? There's a moment of silence, then soft footsteps. Ooh, he's... <laughs> like, I like him, he's cool. So he's kind of got a brash, he, he... taunting... Uh, like a taunting, flirting thing to him. I he's see. flamboyant. Okay. A canine appears around the corner, his fur much darker than the wolf's, almost pitch black. He's covered in gold highlights, and immediately I'm struck by how he looks. Not just because his presence is impressive, it definitely is, but mostly because he reminds me of something on Earth. Yeah, Yeah. I wonder what the fuck. I wonder (laughs) who. Not just something, but an entire thing. A culture. As I stare, I realize, I guess that, that pose conveys a lot of what I just said. <laughs> yes. The lean. As I stare, I realize he's not looking at Amicus, but at me. He's so pretty. I quickly look down again, not wanting to draw attention to myself. Neferu, this is my brother, Amicus. Neferu bows his head slightly in Amicus's direction. Hello. Thank you for letting me take up residence in your palace. It is indeed beautiful. It's hard to describe, but I immediately know that Neferu is speaking a different language than the wolves. It has a different feel in my brain, like a different dialect. Certainly. You'll have to excuse my appearance, I was just out of combat training. Oh, I see. It must have been a rough session by the looks of it. Neferu gives Amicus a cool smile, and Amicus can only 
manage a grunt in response, self-consciously running a paw over his head fur. That's when Nefero turns his co his cool blue gaze on me. Like blue steel. Now he's flexing. <laughs> <laughs> and who might you be? That's how he points. Look at that. Dude, that's a JoJo's pose right yeah. there. He's, he's like, JoJo's posing at me he's right like now. He's holding his bicep while pointing at you. <laughs> and it like makes his entire arms and chest all flex at once. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I open my mouth to answer, then catch myself quickly looking back down. This is Marco, my pet. He's an abandoned child. Amica says it quickly, putting its paw on my shoulder again while gently pulling me in the direction of his room. I, it was wonderful meeting you, but now I must be off to my shower. Neferu offers his paw to me. I pause again, but Amicus just stares at Neferu, so I take it and do the same as I did with Virginia. <laughs> Neferu lets out a soft chuckle as I let go of his paw. What a fascinating creature. Do you speak? I make sure I give a long pause, then... Little... I see. Neferu keeps his eyes fixed on me, and I have to wonder why the hell he's taken such an interest. <clears throat> Amicus draws me close to his side with a paw before starting to walk in the direction of the hall. If you'll excuse us, I need my pet's assistance in the showers. Pleasure meeting you. Virginia, who had been silent throughout, smiles. Don't worry, Neferu. We've just caught my brother in a bad mood. Usually he's much more friendly. I can hear you, Virginia. I'm still here. Oh, so you are. You said you had to be off. We shall speak more in depth in the evening, perhaps when you've stopped sulking? <laughs> Amicus grunts noncommittally and pulls me along towards his bedroom. There we go, my planning's starting to pay off. I was like, okay, I need to try it out who's going to play all the characters, but like, oh, they're not going to get introduced for like five hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll take some of the, some of the, some of the yeah, load off for you. It feels faster when you're reading in your head. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. As we arrive at Amicus's room, there's a cart of flatbread, vegetables, and a bowl of sauce. All of the food they describe the sounds delicious. Especially since it already exists and you don't have to make it, which is my um, favorite th that thing is about the, food. That is the best part, because uh, it's on a cart. And it was it just there already. Yeah. Like, yes, exactly. I would like to just walk ho arrive home and there's just a cart. <laughs> I want flatbread veggies and sauce. How do I get this life but on a budget? <laughs> I mean, you have to go, you have to get beat up by an old man. Oh. I've come to realize that there are two main meals in the day, breakfast and dinner, with a sort of midday snack in between. Amicus grabs the cart and shoves it into the room toward the sofa, almost rattling the contents on the floor. Then, without a word, he heads straight to the shower, leaving me to sit on the couch while I frown at the door. Aww. At first, I think about calling him out on his bad mood when he comes back out. Maybe go on about how I didn't ask to be here and him being an ass only makes it worse. But then I start to realize that maybe I wouldn't be so happy myself if I've gotten my ass kicked in front of my friends. I spend the next 15 minutes or so spreading the orange-colored sauce on the flatbread before sprinkling the vegetables on top and rolling it into a wrap. It's good, and the sauce is one of the first spicy things I've experienced on this moon. But then Amicus comes back out, offering me the next spicy thing, <laughs> looking particularly fluffy. I'm about to ask if he wants to get brushed, but he just falls back into his bed with a groan. You alright? Never better. <laughs> a few of the chopped peppers fall out of my wrap onto the sofa, and I quickly pick them up and set them on the cart. This is actually really good. I was starting to worry that you guys didn't have food with actual flavor here. You know, the country where you guys uplifted Italy is known for its food. Actually, before you, uh took me, I had this trip planned to go to Naples, which is uh, a few hours outside of Rome, just trying just to try the pizza. Uh, do you have pizza here? Italian pizza is not like pizza. It is a flatbread with sauce yeah. and like one topping on it. Yeah. It is not like pizza. We Don't have, expect this. No, we have a place in town that serves Italian pizza. Have you seen that? 
no. than it is that, where it's like, it is definitely like, that's a lot of bear sauce on top of that. Yeah, bread. It, it's, it's flatbread sauce, and the one I saw just had like cubes of ham on yeah. it with no cheese. Honestly, I, I think I, I think I like mine. I like, I like ours better. <laughs> I, I like ours better also. But is it, is it I. Is uh, Naples? It is Naples. Okay. Naples. I, I think it's, it's one of those. I think it's. It's Naples because they don't sleep there. It's Naples. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's one of those ones where you, you probably do pronounce it differently there, but everyone else pronounces it Naples, just like, just like how we say Rome, and they call yeah. it Roma. It's not called Rome to them, and they live there. You think that they should be the people who decide what their country's called, yeah. like Japan being Nippon. You think we just all call it Nippon because that's what they call it, but it's, it's their country, but we call it Japan. Yeah. I think that's stupid. I'm trying just to think about where out. Marco's from. I, I assume he's supposed to be. Because I think it's not established, is it? It's not established. I think it's just, but he was—he's vacationing in Italy. But he's there for—he's there to take a school. trip, but for school to do <clears throat> what? I forgot what they said he was there. Like what his schooling was. I don't know. I oh I no, almost... he's going to be like a historical studies, but like in it, like Italian. Oh yeah, he's culture a, specifically. He's a college student, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he, of course, he's a college student. It'd be a real weird game if he was a high school student. <laughs> yeah, no, this game, like... Oh, yeah, he's 23. I'd be no, right he's 20. out. No, he's 20. Yeah, 20. Well, no, but he... he uh, he's... Amicus is 23. Uh... Yeah, but he was gonna go. Dr I mean, okay, but I was gonna say, but he was gonna go, he was gonna go drink, but the drinking age in Italy is way way it's lower. Longer, younger. Yeah. yeah. He also, he he thinks of Amicus as swimming in terms of meters, but his height in terms of feet. Well, that fucking fucks everything so up. So I'm really like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's a Canadian. Like he's ten meters ahead, but he's seven feet tall. I'm like, hmm. Canadians do meters, right? Yeah. I think uh, everyone does meters maybe. except for us. It has to be we're, simultaneously we're wondering where the author's from, because I also don't know that. I don't know a single thing. About, I think about the author, uh, besides the fact that their their username is Howley, and that's it. Like I can only assume. Uh, blindly that they are probably a cis gay male, but even that is like assu assumptions based on what they wrote, basically. I, I, mean, don't, th I don't think I've even seen an we? avatar for them. So I have no idea anything about them. Way more ac way more contact with the artist. I've talked to the artist multiple times at this point, but like, I've, I, the, like the actual writer of this game is a complete enigma to me. I think it's a... Uh, so this is like a bit of a tangent, but I think it's fascinating how like writers and uh, like uh, illustrators can collaborate with each other. I think it must yeah. be so difficult to get that to be exactly how you want it. As oh, like yeah. as a writer, you really have to get the, an illustrator who understands what you mean and get it to like your relationships to gel with each yeah, other. I because get the, I get the feeling they chat a lot. Well, because you can't you can't have someone drawing your stuff if they don't understand your intent. It'd be really hard yeah. to be an author and not have like the person who draws your pictures to know what you mean. Because it'd be so frustrating to be I, like, no, that's, that's it, not what I, I meant. Imagine at least gets easier or something. Because like the uh... that's why a lot of people who are authors stick with the same illustrator all like over and yeah. over. If you find one that works for you, they they understand your brain. Like you mm -hmm. can convey something to them and they can draw it. And you're like, that's exactly what I meant. As opposed to someone who just like draws something <sighs> way off the rails and yeah. you're like oh, that bums me out you really didn't get what i was going for it must be heartbreaking i but, would think but then, then artists also have like a, a bandwidth to them of like how much they can like handle i mean it, that too because i mean people will ask for too out. much L like in this game the uh i don't have the name on on, on hand but it's in my in the video description but the uh, the backgrounds are done by a different artists than the characters i could see that just because they are like uh i mean like, i i can see that being because if you're good at drawing People, certain people are better at drawing like landscapes and yeah. backgrounds and drawing like a character doesn't necessarily make you good at drawing backgrounds that's no. a completely different like scope of interest you know yeah i'm trying to remember the my, my wikipedia brain is failing me here but uh i feel like the same guy might have written echo which was their previous game the, the company's called echo project because they because they made the game echo that was like their first major project, and we'll, we might get to that because it's supposed to be really fucking good. That sounds familiar, but I don't uh, remember which one that is. But that is, is that another. If it is written by Howley, it's definitely drawn by someone else. Mm. But uh, there's two sequels to this game that are that are also drawn by the same person. Are they out already? No. In fact, they're both in progress. One of them is a sequel sequel that takes place years later, and the other one is like a midquel. 
that I can only really explain later, but it takes place during this game, essentially, or in between this game. Okay, I, I understand. I, I can vaguely yeah. put that together. But those are there. There's a lot of there's actually a lot of furry visual novels that are funded by Patreon that are all in progress. Right I'm now. sure there are a lot are of furry like visual novels waiting, that are funded by Patreon. But people are just like waiting with bated breath of like, when is it going to be fucking done? Because a lot of people like know like the previous projects by these companies. Are these groups? When I think of and, devotion in terms they, of a fan base, don't want to, like, furries play... are definitely really high up there. Yeah, but like not everyone wants to play it mid game, so they like they support it on Patreon. They're like, when's it gonna be done? When's it gonna be done? <laughs> they're like waiting for like the years it takes for the final uh, version of it to come out, because then they can actually play through it all in one go. Because there's moments in this game where I'm like, I would not have liked having to play this with cliffhangers and then waiting six months for resolution or something, because oh, there's man. some real moments where you're like, no, you can't just stop here. I don't know exactly where they were. But anyway, pizza. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Not, Amicus not gazes at me with a frown. Don't go to Italy for the pizza. Go, <laughs> go to for Italy everything else. for the hot people. <laughs> uh, the, there are some, yes. <laughs> I saw them with my I eyes. I saw them. They have hot people in Italy. They all dress very nice. The rumor is they, draw, they dress much more nice than Americans do. <laughs> I wonder if we understood a single thing I said. No. Pizza? Oh, well, it's sort of like this. It's sort of like this if I'd kept it flat and we baked it. <laughs> so not like this. Anyway, you want some? I hold up my wrap with a smile. Amicus glares. I just had my squ gut squashed flatter than that flatbread, and you're assuming I still have an appetite? I don't even know if that works that way, honestly. <laughs> I quickly lower it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Amicus goes on staring at the ceiling while I nibbled at the food, though I'm not really all that hungry anymore. Then Amicus sighs deeply, covering his face with his paws. I'm sorry. I've just been thinking a lot, is all. About? Amicus just shakes his head, continuing to rub his brow. Well, how sore I am, for one. I look over at the wolf, then remember that what he'd said about last night, about the massage. I think about it for a moment. Aww. Amicus has been trying to make me as comfortable as possible through the few days I've been here. Minus the sofa. I kind of feel like I owe it to him. You want a massage? I see Amicus freeze up, his face still covered with his paws until he finally lowers them, his expression almost comical. What? I feel myself turning red. I asked if you want a massage. I thought you didn't want to. Well, I never really gave you an answer, did I? Amicus narrows his eyes. I don't want to force you into something you don't want to do. Well, I'm offering, but if you don't want it... I start to sit back down. Amicus's ears fall flat. No, no, please do. I try to hide my smile as I get back up and approach the bed. Amicus just sort of watches me, half sitting up. Once I get to the edge of the bed, I pause. Uh, so what do I do? Oh, uh... Amicus rolls over onto his front. Well, honestly, I don't really know how it's supposed to be done, but you could start with some light rubbing. <laughs> light rubbing. <laughs> Cautiously, I get up onto the bed on my knees, trying not to get tangled up in my robe as I scoop closer. Tentatively, I reach out and touch the wolf's back. Amicus inhales gently, his back rising against my fingers. Then, slowly, I start to massage, starting on his thick neck before slowly rubbing my way down. I'm trying to picture massaging a person covered with fur, only because, like, skin, when you massage it, if you don't have oil or anything, it just kind of really pulls, and I imagine it, yeah. it comes off as, like, really painful. I don't get, like... Massages don't really make a lot of sense unless you're, like, really lubed up. But yeah. fur, like, what would you do if you had a person covered in fur? How I do don't you... know. I mean, just imagine petting birch. Like, you kind of just go, just go to town. Like, the fur, like, changes the whole everything. I think their, skin, their skin's looser. But on people, yeah. like, when you try to massage them, if you don't have, like, if they're not, like, oiled up enough, you just end up, like, it feels like you just pull their skin, like, a painful way. Yeah. You know? I'm just, I'm just visualizing what this must be like. If anything, it feels like it's a lot of work just to get past the fur. 
if it's thick enough. Yeah, you probably have to like you have to reach down real walls. far. It probably takes up like a you know a third of your fingers already with how furry they are. So you yeah. have to dig in there deep. Like they're wolves, so it's probably something closer to a husky. This is my, my pet birch when I'm gonna <laughs> try to figure out the logistics of this situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that bir that birch is like 70% fur by weight. <laughs> no, if you shaved him down, he'd be, he'd be pretty fucking sick. Yeah. He probably weighs like not that far off from my dog, and he's so, he's like twice as big. Yeah. I don't know the first thing about massaging, so I just do what feels natural, and Abacus seems to like it. When I reach his mid back, he grunts. A little more gentle there, got scraped on the stairs. Oh, poor guy. I pause, then tense, then tease through the fur a bit and find a small, fresh scab right on Amicus's spine. I pet the fur back down before moving past it, working my thumbs into the muscles on either side of the wolf's spine. Kato's an asshole. Amicus lets out a choked cough of surprise. <laughs> Marco, don't say that. He's the acting emperor. Well, he is. If you must say it, at least keep your voice down. I swear Cassius sometimes has his ear pressed to my door. Amicus moan. Amicus moans as I start on his neck again and press harder than I had last time, really sinking into the muscle. The wolf's body melts into the bed, and I grin with satisfaction as I keep the pressure down the rest on uh, uh, the rest of his back. It would be easier if I was straddling him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sense. But I don't know how I feel about doing that. A lot of things yet. are easier if you're straddling someone. <laughs> Amicus is quiet for a few minutes while I work. Then he sighs. He was right, though. I still act like a pup. I need to be more serious. I frown. What do you mean? Kato had every right to beat me. I haven't been acting very much like an emperor lately. I shake my head. First of all, no one should be beaten. Second, Cassius acts like a child, or pup. I mean, you might sometimes act a little immature, but he's a brat. You're fine if he's the only one you're competing with. Yeah, but he has an echo chamber. He goes out there and he has yeah. like a group of people who really, really like, like what he says. Yeah. He's, a, he's the brainy one who goes out and says the right things and gets all the votes. He's just a catty little shit to us, but he's clearly working and getting yeah, things done. Yeah, it, it, he comes off. He, he's the scar. He's the scar in the situation. Like I said, he's, he's going to be very... Prepared. He's going to be very good at talking and being very <laughs> smooth. And we're not really campa campaigning ourselves, and which is the problem. And we're probably going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Besides, you're a lot of fun to be around. If I were a wolf, I would think it'd be pretty cool to have an emperor as nice and fun as you are. And he's so handsome. He needs to go yeah, out there totally and present how himself. Elect things. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, kind of. Sometimes, unfortunately. Yeah, we do keep electing freaking actors. <laughs> yeah, Reagan. Someone you could have a, you could have a beer with. It's like you're not gonna. You're, that's an act. You're not gonna have a beer with anybody. Dude, look they, at they, look at who you have beers with. Do yeah. you think they should run the country? <laughs> But also, like, any of those supposed you could have, have a beer with them presidents, it's like, they grew up in a fucking, like, they don't even, they've never even interfaced with normal society before. They're like, how much could a banana be? <laughs> that, oh my gosh. Seven dollars? I don't remember the quote exactly. <laughs> I'm so sad she's dead. I don't like that. Everyone needs to come back. <laughs> There's, yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. David Bowie. Yeah. Come back, you handsome man. Oh, really? Then I suppose things are different here. I forgot myself at the lake today, and when Kato caught me teasing you... Amicus presses his face into a pillow, cringing. Can you not have fun as the prospective emperor? Not really. Cassius hasn't been out in the lake for years. Sometimes I think something's wrong with me, that I still enjoy such things. No, you're... you... I was, say human, human, I, was, I was gonna say human being, but it's <laughs> not the right word. But yeah, enough. Imperfect language. I think trying to decide whether my opinion is worth anything on this alien moon. Well, I don't think so. People our age on Earth do way dumber stuff to have fun, and it's considered normal. Even when you get older, you're expected to do things you enjoy. Otherwise, what's the point of life? We're only here for a moment before we die, and that's it. I can't help but feel like my argument's a bit amateurish. Amicus doesn't seem concerned, concern, uh, convinced either. 
Well, first of all, the point of my life is to lead my people to a better future. Secondly, we become one with the parents when we die. I frown. Become one? What, do they absorb your soul or something? I stifle my chuckle when I see that Amicus is still very serious. Oh no. No, well, I don't know. But our consciousness joins theirs and we go on to spread throughout the universe together. Huh. Is there proof of this? Did they say what happens? That's what happens? Marco should know better. There's never proof of this. Uh, danger. Of course. I think of questioning him further, but right now I'm not really in the mood to debate anything religious with this wolf. His mind seems to be on that having fun issue anyway. Well, I will say that Roman emperors on Earth had a lot of fun. I laugh. There was an emperor, an emperor named El 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 Elagabalus that didn't really give a shit about what people thought of him. He had all the fun and sex he wanted. Look at Caligula. Oh? Amicus sound, seems amused. Then I wince, remembering that no one really liked Elagabalus and that he was killed along with his male lover and that his beheaded oh, no. body was dragged through the streets of Rome. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna look up Elagabalus later. So, so bad example. Well, I think balance is a good thing to have in life. Be serious when you need to be. Have fun when you can. Amicus just grunts again and I go on rubbing him for a while longer. Oh. So while I was at my studies, I had some time in the library to myself. I found this primate species in the general vicinity of your star. They were part of a failed uplift and looked generally similar to you. A lot hairier, but I don't think anyone will notice. The name they have for themselves isn't pronounceable by us, but we named them the Simians. So if anyone asks what you are, tell them that. Oh, okay. It was Simanians, because... Cause, Did cause, it say Simanians? Yeah, because Simians are what we already have here. Simanians, there it is. We already the have Simanians. Simi I, I read that as Simians, I was like, oh, that yeah. already exists for us, in a way. Womp. I repeat the word in my head, trying to memorize it. Also, I would recommend avoiding the Chemian. I didn't like the looks of him. Why not? Because he was too hot. I don't know, but his demeanor was rather rude. I've heard they are an arrogant people, but to see to see it in person... I almost laugh at the hypocrisy of that statement. I'd point it out if Amicus wasn't being so grumpy right now. And the way he looked at you didn't sit well with me. Ooh. Just be sure you watch out for him. I didn't really see much of a difference between Neferu and the wolves aside from appearance, but Amicus seems genuinely concerned. It's racism. Alright. It's because he had all that cool eyeliner on. <laughs> Amicus grunts in response, and I go on rubbing for a little while longer. Then Amicus rolls over. I pause. <laughs> 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 I like how you could just tell what's going to happen. Um, Amicus suddenly opens his eyes as if realizing what he's doing. Oh, uh, do I do your front too? Hmm. Well, often after I get my massage, my drone rubs me. It helps me fall asleep for my afternoon naps. What a luxurious life you live. Rubs you where? Oh my gosh, no! Amicus's Amic <laughs> eyes turn bright red. <laughs> my... Oh. my belly. Oh, okay, okay. I laugh. Okay, dog. Don't laugh, you're the one who wanted to know. Okay, puppy dog. I hesitate and then almost, uh, almost automatically my hand reaches out and starts to rub. Amicus is tense at first, then starts to relax, the blush in his ears receding. You're such a canine. I am a canine. <laughs> <laughs> Got me there. Aww. Oh, what a belly. Sweet cam. <laughs> the fur... The fur, fluff, fluffy and disheveled from the shower, smooths down against the wolf's thick stomach, his belly rising and falling against my hand. In his relaxed state, his stomach is soft into the fur, and I press down a bit more firmly to, uh, to really rub at it. Amicus grunts and winces a bit. Too hard? Just sore, but keep going, it feels good. As I continue to rub, his eyes close and his muzzle parts slightly. 
So, the trial starts soon. At the end of the month, I guess? Yes. And I'm involved in it somehow. Mm. You want to talk about it later? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting a bit nervous. But Amicus doesn't seem to be worried, and that puts me at ease, at least a little bit. That's why I noticed a particular bulge in Amicus's undergarments, the one I'd noticed when I'd brushed him yesterday. I'm not surprised this time, though. If brushing had done it to him, rubbing definitely would. So I ignore it, and so does Amicus. Or maybe he's just asleep. I realized then how much I've accepted my life here, rubbing this prospective Emperor Wolf's belly, even though I know it's making him hard. <laughs> <laughs> what a sentence. What a sentence to say. <laughs> oh, it's taking me back to fucking monster camp and turgid bull dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, a, what a treasure. After, after an entire previous game of them being ex like relatively extreme, but not quite saying things explicitly, getting to the sequel where they just say that explicitly was like, bull was dick. not ready. <laughs> you like how this is this is your job. It's a great. This, this is a good job. <laughs> it is. It's a like good what job. I I can read out turgid bull dick and then I, get, I wish and my then I, job then would I get pay me for that. My like, job would fire me for that. They I, wouldn't pay me for that. <laughs> I get rewarded for stuff that you're not supposed to do. Lucky. It's great. I get rewarded <laughs> right up until the moment where it gets demonetized and blocked or whatever. Oh, well, yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, turgid but... bull dick. <laughs> Let's just say it's it a few demonetized. more times in case the AI hasn't picked up what we're demonetize saying. Demonetize us. <laughs> I'm demonetized shockingly and frequently. Like, I'm be... surprised because I'm on your channel sometimes. <laughs> I know. Like, just your your voice alone. Like, they should just They, they know. should just put a little flag next to it. Algorithmically, they're like, I know what she's up to. <laughs> but I also realized that I don't really mind it. It's only been a few days, but there's something about this wolf. I don't know. I just like him. Amicus starts to snore, so I slowly stop rubbing, watching his chest rise and fall with his, st his steady breaths. I think about going back over to the sofa, but instead I just roll over to Amicus's left, curling up on my side in the soft pillows. W with the relaxing sounds of Amicus's gentle snores behind me, I drift off into a light sleep. All right, here's where I have a gripe with this game's writing. It's like, a, this is like, my, I think this might be my biggest gripe with the entire game. And it drives me crazy because I was like mentally yelling at the game in this chapter. And I'm like, what the fuck? Cause it's specifically, they primed me for the idea that Marco is like, Marco is relatively thoughtful and he questions stuff. And it's also like not the type to be like, I got kidnapped and I'm okay with this. We, what an adventure. It's like, he's like, here's why you, what you did is fucking out the ethical. And he's like calling out Amicus all the time. And like, I, I like Marco's characterization in that way. Well, he seems like he's being uh, practical as to understanding what is expected from him and what is the smartest thing for him to do, despite yeah. it not being... Like they all Maybe he's always aware that he's been kidnapped, so he keeps it in his yeah. brain, but he also knows that to keep his position safe and to get back home, he needs to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. He's, like, he's pretty aware of, I just, of I just his like position how, here. I like how surprisingly believable he feels as, as a protagonist in this kind of story. Yeah, no, I, I would, <clears throat> if I was in his position, I'd be similar where I'd kind of roll with things, because yeah. I... Uh, I was trying to work the system in a way where I can get back. But here's what drives me crazy. So, we know that the wolves tried and, and, and probably failed or something to uplift the humans. Because he was in the, that's why Amicus was there. Was yeah. He was under that impression and something. But supposedly, the humans lost... Like, the, not only did the uplift fail, but the humans lost all context and history and memory of the wolves or something. Which... Isn't one thousand percent true because we do have that legend with Romulus to go on that Re you call Re that like Remulus you, you call and Romulus, yeah. yeah. So like that's like immediately like oh that's what they're or doing. Remus and Romulus, one of those. What, what drives me crazy is Neferu is in, is introduced here, and all we get is this tiny moment of like huh, that seems familiar. Anyway, I'm like, how are you not losing your okay, shit right so now, Marco? I, I was gonna say that, Marco, that, you should be losing your mind. Well, because that's because what that suggests in the story is so much. Because people, when you go to like human beings and alien contact, the first thought everyone has there's like there's like maybe two, but like yeah. one of which is the, the, the Aztecs. And the second one is the Egyptians. Every, like that—that's what I mean. I don't believe in yeah. that. But conspiracy no, theories go it's... crazy over like 
the aliens and the Egyptians and the pyramids and how yeah, they built it's, them. It's like that that shirt that Quentin Reviews put out that's like, aliens don't like white people. Yeah, because <laughs> they, that's they the never seeming, visit white people. seemingly the implication of like the racist assumption that everything's made by aliens except for stuff that white people did. And, then, like, all, and then Africa, yeah, they, visit, they visited ingenuity. Africa with their crystal skulls and they're like... And then they visited the South Americans with their, their Aztec temples, and they visited the Egyptians with their pyramids. And they never visited any of us, because we're like a, too like white. Immediately, all the way in this chapter, I'm just like, what the fuck? That's all I can think about right now. Like, they're, 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 that's... Like, they're not going to play that off as, like, a coincidence, right? Like, there's a fucking Egyptian here. Like, what the fuck? So what, you, like, what, what does that mean? What you're saying to me is that they, that they don't go into that at all? Marco does not question this. Oh, they just, <laughs> and I'm they, like, what are you doing, That does kind of bum me out. How are you not losing your shit right now? You're the only person that's, like, that can make this connection in this story. And I need you to do it a bit harder than you did with that little, like, huh moment. <laughs> like, you, you should be losing your mind right now. What the fuck does it mean to see, like, an Egyptian jackal walk in? when you already think that these people like uplifted you and created a Roman civilization like what does that mean does that not mean and would, wouldn't that mean that they attempted to uplift us before you would think right like like that would be the the initial uplifting I mean well, granted I, I forget the timeline Roman Egypt I think it's I mean a lot of that's crossover in general but like yeah. I I I don't know. You think that that would... I don't know if the timing would have to be at the same time or not if it did happen. But I'm just like... I'm just like staring at Marco like, you need to think about this more. Why aren't you thinking about this more? And he's not thinking about it I mean, it I'm more. thinking about it more. I'm not even involved in the story. Yeah. It's like, how do you not obsess over that? But anyway, enjoy obsessing over that, everybody. It's... It's bedtime. Bedtime. Like, this is harder to do on a controller. <laughs>